Hello, I'm Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods, and welcome to a special episode where we will be introducing you to my mid-2007 MacBook Pro right here. And this isn't going to be just any cool little MacBook Pro here. This is going to be an upgrade video. We're going to be showing you what this system was like beforehand, and then we'll be upgrading it to a early 2008 spec. And a uh, quick backstory to this is... Jay Vry was selling uh, a 2007 MacBook Pro, and uh, you know I told him I'd buy it off of him, bought it off of him, and um, I found out, of course, it was a 2007 MacBook Pro. Um, I thought it was a late 2007. It happens to be a mid 2007, but they're both the same system basically. Only difference is the keyboard, and um, I think that's it, really. Um, the keyboard's very different from the late 2007 and the early 2008. And also, um, the trackpad on the 2007s are very different from the early 2008. Um, the trackpad on these are the ones that they used from the PowerBook all the way into the mid-2009 MacBook, the white non-unibodies. And uh, this trackpad was one of those, basically. Same basic design. Um, so they used this trackpad from about mid-2004, early 2004, uh, ADB-based. But in 2005, they upgraded it to a USB trackpad and then used it on through all the uh, Intel MacBook and MacBook Pros on into 2009. But the 2008 MacBook Pros actually got a new multi-touch trackpad, which were better. Um, the only systems that kept them were the non-unibody MacBooks. So, this has one of those old trackpads. So, to fix all that, we'll have to swap in a early 2008 uh, top case, um, which um, also includes the new keyboard. Now the old keyboard would work, but all the function keys are different. We'll show you that later in the video. And um, it's just, it will make it look a little newer and it will work better, plus this has the new trackpad on it. And what we will be doing is installing this early 2008 2.6 gigahertz um, Core 2 Duo um, MacBook Pro board into it and turn this 3,1 MacBook Pro into a 4,1. And then this will also be compatible with uh, Mojave with Colin Mister's Patcher. Now this board right here, my whole goal for building this system was to build the cheapest 15 inch non-unibody MacBook Pro 2.6 gigahertz. And um, I'm, I think I will end up making the cheapest um, out there, uh, but I'm not going to show you guys the prices. It's still really cheap. This is super cheap, but um, eh, I might show you, but we'll, we'll see. But the uh, original intent was just to swap out the board and have it work, and then I learned about the top case problems and having to swap that out made it a little more expensive. But this system was fully functional before we do this upgrade, and it will be fully functional when we're done with this upgrade. This board right here was mismarked on eBay as a 2007 board with a 2.6 gigahertz um, Core 2 Duo in it, which of course isn't right. So um, I bought it off the guy. He said it wasn't having any power. It just didn't work. And I looked at it and the really bad pictures he had of it and said it looks pretty decent. It should work. So I sent it to Colin Mister and he did the friends and family discount for me to swap out the GPU. But before he did that, he tested the board and it actually worked. And one of the biggest problems with these systems is the GPU. The original um, 8600M uh, GT chips that, uh, from NVIDIA had a, uh, a, a layer, um, a substrate that would pull apart. And um, all of them, all the first revisions of these chips, basically all the chips that were ever in these systems would fail. And um, 
a, uh, NVIDIA released a, a new uh, release of it, a, a new revision of it to fix that problem. Apple did a recall and they'd swap out the C GPUs. But the recalls are far gone from now and uh, the new GPUs do not uh, separate. So that's good. Colin put in a brand new uh, GPU onto this board even though it didn't actually need it yet. It would eventually if I use this a lot because heat is what causes it to come apart. So Colin swapped this in and he gave me the friends and family discount to swap it in and in grand total this whole board cost me fifty dollars and this is going to be the cheapest way to build a 2.6 gigahertz 15 inch non unibody and we'll be showing you how to do that. I also have six gigs of DDR2 RAM and a um, new uh, super drive because the one in this one's really loud and it sounds like it's dying. It does eventually read the disc, but it's it's not it hurts to listen to. <laughs> so we'll be swapping out the super drive, and I also have a Mojave compatible Wi-Fi card to stick into it also. So I'm really excited to show you guys this uh, video and all the upgrades but before we do that let's go and go over this system right here and show you what it's like right now show you the case and everything about it the battery even still works and this is the original battery for what I can tell works great so um, I'm really excited to show you guys and let's get to it Okay, so here's everything that's going to go into this system. We've got the early 2008 top case with the revised keyboard and uh, new trackpad, the uh, 2000, um, the 2.6 gigahertz um, board, which happens to be the fastest board they had for those models. And these boards, um, a complete system, go for over 200 bucks on eBay. The eBay effect's really strong with this system. Um, so if it's working they go for well over that so like I said this is going to be cheap uh, we also have the 6 gigs of RAM, the super drive and the Mojave compatible um, airport card here so we have that then we have the system itself which is currently in sleep mode here we go so First off, before I show you this system, I want to quickly show you uh, what Colin did here. He replaced this chip right here. This is a um, uh, NVIDIA um, GeForce um, uh, 8600M GT. Um, if you look here, it says 603. That's how you know it's the revision chip. And it's actually got a date code of 1427, which means it was made the 27th week of 2014. And this is a 2008 board, so they were still making these chips for a long time, the revision. And this is, Colin sent me the original chip, which was on this board, and as we can see here, it says 602 versus 603. And um, the substrate, this black goo here, uh, that holds the chip on, is what fells, and then the chip just peels off of the uh, whole thing here. So if you see here this is a gray goo and that's basically the big difference there uh, what they use this that's that's better. So that that's what Colin did to this board to make this work perfectly and um, I'm really excited to uh, have this thing running with this board in it. So uh, before we show you uh, this system we'll show you the top case and show you the differences between the keyboard and the trackpad. Trackpad looks the same, it isn't, but um, it looks the same. And then with the keyboard, if we um, look here, we've got the old keys, including the Apple keys, which uh, when the uh, mid to th uh, mid to uh, the uh, late 2007 MacBooks came out, they got rid of the Apple keys. And that's one way you can tell um, what model it is and stuff um, for like uh, unibody MacBooks or something like that. Uh, that helps you identify their their age. 
Um, but um, here they they killed this off in late 2009. So there's no more Apple keys or home page keys as we can see here. It's all different. And then all the function keys are also different. As we can see here, brightness controls, and then the sounds all the way down here. As over here, brightness controls the sounds here, and then the other shortcut keys. And there's more function keys on here than on there. So we're going to be swapping the whole top case out and make that uh, a lot easier on me. Now this top case would work on the 2008 board, but um, the ribbon cable is different, plus of course the keyboard is different, and the trackpad is different. Uh, the late 2007 I believe had the same keyboard like I said, uh, but the mid 2007 still had the old fashioned keyboards on them. So that's that's one difference there. This ribbon cable, if you swapped them out, it would work, like I said. But um, really, the only thing different between the logic board in this and the logic board here is literally two things. One, the CPU. This has SSE 4.1 on it, which makes it compatible with Sierra and later. That doesn't. Okay, so this is stuck on El Capitan and you can't boot anything higher than that with this, okay? So that's one problem. The other thing is, even though the logic board otherwise is identical, the uh, connector, hence the uh, reason why you need to switch out the ribbon cable, the connector is uh, in a different location on this board, even though they're the same board otherwise. No clue why Apple did that. But that's the other reason why you need this top case. So anyway, let's quickly show you the system and um, we will um, start taking it apart. So let's, I am currently using a test one so I don't care if you see my password there. But here is the system running and uh, let's see if I can get it to focus. Okay, so here are the specs right here about this Mac. You can tell instantly if it's a 2007 by uh, if it says 2.4, 2.2. The uh, 2008 model had a 2.4, 2.5, 2.6. And the 2.6 is super rare, which is really cool why that I got this board because that's it's just really cool. Most common one was the 2.4. And this is the top of the line 2.4 um, 2007 MacBook Pro. Um, and now it's going to become the top of the line late 2008 MacBook Pro. And um, yeah, here's the uh, uh, chip. This is the original chip probably. We'll look and see if it had been part of the recall or not. But I have a feeling it's probably the original chip and it survived. But we'll see because um, it's still running and uh, there's no graphical errors. So it could be either one, but they used this chip from the mid-2007 all the way through the early 2008, and they all fell, um, unless they get replaced. But anyway, so there's the specs. We'll go to System Report, and you can see it is a 3 comma 1, and um, we are running El Capitan. If you try to run something higher than this, it just will not boot it, period. Um, it will error out and just give up. So, that's, it sucks, but, you know, oh well. So anyway, I have ran the benchmarks on here with Geekbench 3 already, which we'll show you after we do the upgrade. But before we do the upgrade, let's do a quick tour of the system itself. So I'll shut it down. We'll do a quick tour of the system. So, this is a pretty neat system here. Chrome text on the front, all that stuff. The non-unibodies were pretty darn neat. Um, you know, it's got the old-fashioned uh, PowerBook latching system for the screen. Uh, it's got an IO, IO, uh, excuse me, IR port in the front. Um, sleep activity light here. Uh, the optical drive. The ports, Kensington, USB 2, FireWire 400, FireWire 800, Gigabit Ethernet, DVI, 
And then on the other side we have an Express Card 34 slot, which will probably end up with a USB 3 card in it, uh, a headphone out, audio in, another USB 2, and then the um, MagSafe. And then on the bottom, we have the bottom. And if we push up on these tabs here, we can pull the battery out, and here's the battery, still fully charged. Actually, it's it's been running for a while now, but it, it still works fully fine. And uh, I'm happy with the battery, it works great. Uh, but anyway, so here are the specs it currently is, and um, it's going to change. So anyway, I'm going to set up everything for the um, swap here, and uh, we'll get on to it. So let's go. All right, let's start tearing the system down. So we've got the old logic board out and we're about to put the new one in and um, it as you can see here is basically identical like I said we got to get the heat sinks off I took them off all in one piece just so it wouldn't catch um, so we'll get those heat sinks off and uh, we'll also take this airport card out which is on a daughter card um, let's do that first. I did notice that I do have an extra antenna on this card, which I didn't think I'd have. Uh, so I've got to figure out which antenna is important, which antenna is not, and uh, hook it back up properly. So let's uh, fix that real quick. Alright, and there's the old airport card, which we'll be replacing with this airport card. And now I've got to figure out how I'm going to hook it up. Looks like one and two go here and here. So we'll hook up one and two here and here. And it should work, I hope. The blue wire is, I don't know what that's for. Here's the old board with the T7700 in it, and here is the new card with the T9500 in it. They look, like I said, basically the same. Uh, we're going to see what revision this chip is really quick. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. But this board is fully functional currently, so um, I'm going to uh, definitely probably sell it. So. I'm going to wipe this cleaner up and then I'll come back. Alright, uh, to my not total surprise, uh, this is the original GPU right here. As you can see, it says 602 on it. 
uh, from what I can tell, this system really hadn't been used a whole lot. It's still got some thermal paste in there. Uh, this will be cleaned up uh, before I sell it. But um, from what I can tell, this system really hasn't been used a whole lot. The thermal paste was still tacky, believe it or not. And um, there's barely any dust at all in this case. Even though the case looks like it had been used a little bit, the, there's no evidence this thing's ever been cracked open. And there's barely any evidence that it's ever been used. I mean, there's a little dust here and there, but nothing really bad. And the thermal paste is like brand new. It still had all the tape, all the factory tape on it and everything. So I'm a little shocked. Um, but anyway, that's how you tear one of these systems down. This still has the original 2 gigs of RAM in it. I'll leave it in the board. Um, I don't need it. So I'll sell it with 2 gigs of RAM in it. And um, it's where it gets cleaned up a little bit more. But uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, prep this board put the uh, clean the heat sink and put this back on it and um, continue on from there okay so here is the 4 comma 1 board right here with the 3 comma 1 heat sink on it and it's ready to go back in the case now I figured out that the uh, 3 comma 1 heat sink uh, might be a little bit different than the 4 comma 1 heat sink even though it did fit it was not easy because all the screw holes seem to be just a little bit off, especially this one right here. And I don't know if it's actually putting enough pressure. I think it is. But um, I had to bend this arm backwards a little bit up that direction to make it fit. And I heard a loud pop, um, which means it might have given way a little bit. But it's nice and sturdy now. So this uh, screw hole right here is apparently further up on the 4 comma 1 than it is on the 3 comma 1 and then all the rest of these are just slightly off. Um, the screws still fit in fine and it seems to work fine and it's ready to go back in so I am going to start installing this. I'm not really going to film it. I might show you some highlights about uh, installing it back into the system uh, but really it's the video you just watched only in reverse so uh, I'll uh, cover any um, problems I have along the way all right so I've got the whole 4 comma 1 board installed I uh, taped off the uh, blue wire to the airport card right here with a little duct tape because it's all I had I'm sure it will be fine <laughs> And everything is hooked back up as we can see. It's got the new super drive in it and the original hard drive and original bottom case and original screen. Everything else though is 4 comma 1 and um, it's, it's ready to go. Oops, I forgot to hook that in. I'll hook that in and uh, connect the top case and we'll um, finish putting it together. I'm sure it will power right up. Um, crossing my fingers and hoping really but uh, it should so I'm just going to put it back together and see what happens so let's get into it okay so I haven't plugged the battery in yet um, I want to actually plug it in on camera and we'll uh, do the first boot up this way so hook it in there we go and the battery's got a pretty decent charge on it so we should be able to flip it over, lift it up, and uh, turn this light off here, tilt this upwards, maybe, there we go, and let's hit the power button. That's a good sign. What's it going to do? It's booting right up. Let's move in here. Lower you guys down some because this is a little high. There we go. Tilt it up. 
here we go. We'll go to system specs. Here we go. It says MacBook Pro 15 inch early 2008, 2.6 gigahertz, 6 gigs of RAM, and this actually has twice the VRAM as the uh, first board. So it's got 512 megs of VRAM, which is very nice. Um, we can see the uh, RAM installed there. If we go over to the overview, system report, we can see it says MacBook Pro 4.1 and it's working. So now um, we'll do some quick benchmarks on here with Geekbench and we'll compare the results and then I'll wrap up the video with this thing running Mojave. But first off let's make sure we have internet. We do. It auto connected. In fact let's look at the uh, Wi-Fi system report. It should be Wi-Fi compatible now. Uh, let's see here, it'd be under, I don't remember what it is, yeah, Wi-Fi. It's under airport on older versions of OS 10. There we go. So yeah, this should be compatible with Mojave. We'll let, work or hope it does. Um, so anyway, let's uh, load up Geekbench 3. And... Here are the specs. We'll run 64-bit and we'll let it run. Actually, let's first plug it in so it's not throttled. Let's see if it's working. Is it charging? It is indeed charging. Awesome. Everything seems to be working. Um, Uh, let's see here. Turn that light off. See if the back light works. It is not letting me. Let's turn the light off here. There we go. Keyboard backlight is working. As we can see, the new keys. Awesome. So yeah. Let's run this benchmark and see what, what happens. Let's uh, get rid of that. All right, so we'll uh, just hit run benchmarks and see what happens. Let's go. Okay, and there are the results. I'm going to run this benchmark one more time just to make sure it uh, is a um, good result and then I'm going to upload the original result which is right here and this result or the other result and um, we'll see the difference uh, the performance was so um, I'll be right back so I'm glad I ran the benchmark a few more times I actually ran it about seven times and these are the two last results I got Apparently the hotter this system gets, the faster it runs, which is incredible. This thing jumped up, what, 700 points from uh, the video you guys just watched? It's amazing. So I think I'm going to go with this one over here because it seems to be the plateaued score. This one's... The last few results I got was a single core of that exact score. And the last two results I got was around this area. So I think this is the most realistic score. So we're going to go with this one. We're going to upload that one. And I'll upload that one, set up the comparison, and I'll show you the results of the two. It's incredible, I'll tell you that much. Okay, and here are the results. It's not a huge difference, but it's a pretty substantial difference. This was the Bonestock 2.4 mid-2007 board with the 2 gigs of RAM, and this is a maxed out uh, 2.6 early 2008 board uh, with 6 gigs of RAM and it is just it's a pretty good difference as we can see here um, this would be similar to a early 2008 2.4 in performance except this of course doesn't have SSE 4.1 
uh, but the CPU re uh, results would have been similar for that. So this is kind of like comparing an, a, a base model early 2008 to a maxed out early 2008. It's a pretty good difference uh, at the time. It probably wouldn't have been a big difference, but here it is a pretty big difference. And um, as we scroll through here, it is pretty darn fast. Um, and it, it's really impressive. Now the memory performance difference on this, I don't quite understand. It's probably because this is running in dual channel, where this is running in single channel, because it's um, a, two, a two and a four gig stick versus two one gig sticks. That's probably the difference, but honestly it's not that big of a difference. And um, when it comes to a modern operating system, more uh, RAM is better. So um, six gigs, I'm, I'm going, going to stick with that. But yeah, here is the results. Now before I install Mojave, I want to quickly show you the difference on the board, the um, top case here, as we can see here. That's the new keyboard there. And um, otherwise the case looks basically the same, but I'll grab the old top case here and um, get it caught on the wire there, powering the light. Okay, there is the old keyboard and there is the new one. It's more modern looking, um, no Apple logo, a uh, lot less text, but all the um, extra function keys there and um, that's, that's the difference. And um, while I'm talking about the top case and all this stuff, I do have now a fully functional mid-07 board and a top case, which I will be selling probably on Facebook. Uh, I don't want to deal with eBay. And before we wrap up the video showing you, uh, showing you how it runs Mojave, um, I thought I'd quickly say that this system in total cost me about $150. It was uh, $50 for the um, original system and then $50 for the logic board um, rebuilt by Colin and then $50 for the top case because I didn't know at the time that it was a $15 shipping which still kills me. Um, otherwise I would have gotten it a lot cheaper um, somewhere else. But um, $150 and a system like this that's fully functional on eBay goes for probably $250 plus. It's really expensive, way overpriced for these systems. Okay, and um, you don't know if it's got the uh, defective GPU or not in it until you get it and it A dies or B you open it up to find out. So it's a hit or miss there. This I have the new GPU in it. It will never fail. And I thank you a whole lot Colin for that. That is awesome. But I am going to be selling these two so that's where I lowered the price of this whole build to I hope around $100 which was my original goal was to build this for $100 or less. So um, it's still going to basically be the cheapest 2.6 uh, non-unibody MacBook Pro out there. So I'm really excited. So anyway, I'm going to now install Mojave on this system. The next time you see it, it will be running Mojave. We'll quickly show you it running it. And then we'll wrap up the video. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so after the Mojave installer froze a number of times and crashed on this system, trying to install it just straight from the flash drive, I uh, finally gave up, target disk moded it into my uh, Mac Pro here, and then um, booted the flash drive off the Mac Pro and target disk moded to upgrade to th this one to Mojave. And it took a while to boot up, but um, I think it's going to work fine now that it's done the initial setup. Uh, we're going to do the first setup for Mojave. This is still running off the original El Capitan install, only been upgraded. So uh, I'll quickly go through the setup menus and we'll continue on.
All right, here we are. We are running Mojave right now. Let's uh, zoom you in. And I'm trying to get this banding out of here a little bit, but it's not super great. Yeah, well, that's about as perfect as we're getting you guys here. But anyway, if we go over to about this Mac. We're running 10.14.3. It's the early 2008 board and it's not focusing. There we go. It's uh, the 2.6 and all that stuff. It's working. Everything is nice and running. It's pretty snappy considering it's the uh, hard, uh, old hard drive. Now, I did find something interesting about this system, even though I don't think it really had been used a whole lot. The top case might have been replaced at some point because the uh, old top case said that it was a 160 gig hard drive on the build specs. And this is indeed a mid-2007 top case. I uh, checked the serial number on it. But the uh, internal hard drive on this actually is a 320 instead of a 160 gig hard drive and it's the original Apple hard drive and I I really yeah I still ha don't see any evidence it had been opened before but the top case doesn't seem to match up so I, I, I have no clue what happened there I guess the old top case must have died or something who knows because the inside was nice and clean the thermal paste was nice and clean and it had all the factory tape in it but anyway it doesn't matter now all that's out of it and this is now an early 2008 instead of a mid 2007 and as we can see here it's all working great and uh, the best thing is Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi works as we can see here, it sees it. It brings up the Wi-Fi networks I have in the area. And um, it's, it's nice and quick. And I'm really happy with this whole build. And um, that is my mid-2000, well, sorry, early 2008 swap here. And it looks great. As we can see here, it's now running Mojave. It's been fully upgraded, and I'm really, really happy with it. Anyway, so thank you, uh, Jay Vry, for selling me this system. Thank you, Colin Mister, for um, modding that board for me and uh, telling me that I needed the top case. Um, so thank you, Colin. And um, also thank you, of course, for the Mojave patcher. That's always awesome. Um, and um, yeah, I, I'm very happy with this. This turned out to be a really awesome build, and I'm really excited to be using this as one of my dailies. And um, I, I can't, I can't describe just how happy I am right now. I'm really happy how this turned out, and it's in pretty decent looking shape. I, I can't complain about that. Anyway, so that's the end of today's video, guys. Don't forget that I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com. If you have an Apple device you'd like to sell, just go to SellYourMac.com slash RotkMods and um, sell it through that link. I'll get a little kickback, which will help me a lot. Also, don't forget that I do now have a Patreon. If you'd like to support me, there will be a link at the end of the video and also in the description. And once again, that's the end of today's video, and this has been a Ratke Mods video. Bonus material, guys. Uh, you know how the heat sink had to be modified to get it to fit? Well, I don't think it's making proper contact with the GPU. And that happens to be the area that I modified, aka possibly broke, um, is that tension area for the GPU. I have the fans maxed out now and the GPU is running at 63 Celsius which is fine but when it's on idle the temperature idles around 85 plus. I uh, didn't actually see it at the temperatures I think it was running at um, but that would explain why this thing kept freezing and crashing. So 
Needless to say, if you're swapping boards, um, you'll need a 4,1 heat sink also, which I just ordered. It was $7. It's not bad. So this thing right now is $157. It's still not bad. So, yeah. Anyway, so that's the end of today's video, and thanks again for watching. Even more bonus material, guys. The GPU is still running hotter than the CPU, even under load. Um, but it's now stabilized around 70 um, or so. I'm not really sure what's going on because I dropped the fans back to their default speeds. And it's, it's not overheating. It's just running warm. And GPUs always run warm, especially these. Um, so I don't know. I'm still going to probably swap out the heat sink. I mean, I already ordered it. But, um, it may not be a requirement. I might do a video update on that. Um, also it sounds like one of the fans is, I'm not really sure. It sounds like it's, it's rattling a little bit. Um, I think it's just loose. I'll have to open it up either way. Um, it's not, it doesn't sound like it's bad, it just sounds like it, it's loose. Um, something's rattling, and you can hear it move. It might be something hitting the fan, but, um, it's not loud, it's just a little annoying. Anyway, so yeah, that's the other update on this system. It's working fine now. Um, it's not getting super hot, so who knows. Anyway, so, yep, once again, thanks for watching. Bonus, bonus, bonus material, guys. Yeah, as I was editing this video, I took another look at the MacBook, and I had been having problems putting the top case back on. Um, and I really started looking at it, and the whole top case and bottom case was bulged funny. And that's probably what was causing the fan vibration, because the whole heat sink warped everything. Um, you know how I said none of the holes quite lined up right. Um, yeah, none of the holes quite line up right at all. Um, and it warped everything in the system. So right now I have half the screws out of the system and um, it's unwarped everything so it won't hurt the board. Um, so yeah, needless to say, do not use a 3,1 heat sink on a 4,1 board, period. Uh, very, very bad things will happen. And I will have to do an update video on this system, it looks like, because, yeah, it's just not, not worth the risk of um, keeping this heat sink in here and I want it to actually work properly. And like I said, $7, it wasn't that bad. So I've got all of that ready to um, receive the new heat sink now. And uh, I'll just leave this in parts right now. Uh, that heat sink should be in hopefully by the end of the week, so.